Genshin Impact's newest character, Sangonomiya Kokumi, has arrived, and along with her character banner is the second weapon banner of patch 2.1. The new weapon on this banner is Everlasting Moonglow, a 5 star catalyst with 608 base attack and 49.6% HP as a substat. It also has a passive which provides characters with flat damage based on a percentage of their max HP, increases their healing bonus by 10%, and has an energy refund effect that provides characters with flat amounts of energy after casting their burst when their normal attacks hit opponent. To be clear, the passive will not provide normal damage percentage bonuses. Rather, it will provide a proportion of the user's HP as flat damage. For example, if a character has a Refinement 1 Everlasting Moonglow and has 10,000 HP, the character's normal attacks will get 100 damage multiplied by any modifiers like crit and damage percentage bonuses added to their normal attacks. Everlasting Moonglow is a terrible weapon for all Catalyst characters not named Kokomi. Currently, she is the only Catalyst user who is reliant on normal attacks to deal a large portion of their damage. All the other Catalyst DPS units are not. Sucrus is reliant on transformative reactions, Li and Yenfei are reliant on their charge attacks, Mona is reliant on her burst, and Ningguang is reliant on her charge attacks and burst. Thus, the flat damage bonus to normal attacks does very little for them. Additionally, the energy recharge passive demands field time, which means that the only characters who could plausibly even somewhat benefit from this catalyst are normal attack reliant, energy hungry catalyst users. The weapon also has an HP percentage substat, which does not benefit any characters apart from Barbara, Kokomi, and Yenfei at Constellation 4, and even for those characters, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is a better weapon because of its buff utility. Even for Kokomi, the weapon isn't stellar. While it is her best in slot weapon, she can make use of Prototype Amber, a craftable 4 star weapon, and the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, a 3 star weapon. Thrilling Tales is likely going to be a better weapon for Kokomi when she is being used as an enabler, as it allows her to offer a 48% attack bonus to her teammates. Even when not used as an enabler, Kokomi can use the prototype Amber, which allows her to restore her energy and has an HP stat that benefits Kokomi. On other weapon banners, the bad weapon, such as the Unforged, Scoured Atlas, and Scoured Blade, are at least usable on some characters. However, Everlasting Moonglow is worse than 4 star free to play options on many characters, and even on Kokomi, there are many other options. Even though the Primordial Jade Cutter is an extremely good weapon, the drawback of possibly getting Everlasting Moonglow is simply too large. However, for those players who are set on rolling Everlasting Moonglow for Kokomi, they do have the advantage that if they miss Everlasting Moonglow, they can get a Jade Cutter. The Primordial Jade Cutter is the best in slot or second best weapon for many sword characters, including Xingqiu, Jean, and Albedo. Miss Splitter Reforged can sometimes win out, however, so if players already have a copy of that, there isn't really a large reason to roll for Jade Cutter. If players don't have a Miss Splitter, the Jade Cutter is an incredibly strong option and is better than best in slot 4 star options by anywhere from 10 to 20%. As for the 4 star options on the banner, there is the Stringless, the Flute, Dragon's Bane, Favonius Codex, and the Favonius Greatsword. Of these weapons, the Stringless is quite good, while the Dragon's Bane is an option on Reverse Melt Rosaria and Shangling. The Flute is an extremely niche weapon, but can work for Kaya Freeze, while the Favonius Greatsword and Favonius Codex are usable on characters who need a significant amount of energy, such as Noel and Mona. Overall, while some of the 4 star weapons on banner are decent, most of them are mediocre and only have niche uses. It is not overall recommended to at all to pull on this banner. Everlasting Moonglow is simply unusable on most characters, and even if players have Kokomi, her supportive role allows a 3 star catalyst, the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, to be good on her without the Primo Gem cost of Everlasting Moonglow. The Jade Cutter is simply not good enough to save the banner. Thanks for watching this quick overview of the Kaching Main's Theory Crafting staff's thoughts on Everlasting Moonglow. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. If you'd like to see more quick guides and other informative content in the future, subscribe to the channel. You can stay more up to date on KQM Theorycrafting Thoughts by dropping in our Discord or on Twitch. You'll find the links in the description below.